The points P and Q lie on a straight level road. A car passes point P with a speed of 28 meters per second and decelerates uniformly for 6 seconds to a speed of 16 meters per second. So this is the picture. At t equals naught, the car is at P. So this point is where the car is at. Its speed is 28, so the magnitude of this vector is 28. The car's velocity is pointing towards Q. After t seconds, the speed of the car is 16, so the magnitude of the velocity vector is 16. It then travels at a constant speed of 16 meters per second for 8 seconds. So, 8 seconds later the car is somewhere here. Okay, so now the timer is 14 seconds, 8 plus 6. The car went for with constant speed from this point to this point here, a constant speed of 16 meters per second. The car now accelerates uniformly from 16 meters per second to a speed of 24 meters per second and then passes Q. So we're dealing with uniform acceleration. Presumably um, the speed is 24 meters per second the instant the car reaches Q. So you can see the magnitude of the velocity vector has increased and it's increased uniformly um, from when the car was at this position to when it just passes Q. The car travels 40 meters while accelerating. So we don't have the time taken for the last leg of the journey, but we do have the distance traveled. By the way, the car was accelerating when it went from this point to this point, but the acceleration was negative. A negative acceleration is called a deceleration. But of course, it must be this leg of the journey that the question refers to. You see, we don't have the time taken for the car to go from here to here. So we need the distance. We need either the time taken or the distance for the last leg of the journey if we are going to solve the last leg of the journey. Just knowing the initial and final velocities tells us nothing about the last leg of the journey. Now, as I've explained in previous videos, linear motion um, can be modeled using vectors, but there are only two directions. Okay, one direction is positive, the other direction is negative. So we will take vectors pointing to the right as being positive. So to get the deceleration for the first leg of the journey, well that's the only time the car is actually decelerating, we need to note down the velocity vectors. And they're both positive, they're both pointing in the positive direction, which we're taking to be to the right. Which is the easiest way to do it, of course. We could uh, switch the direction and everything would work out, but uh, that would only complicate things. So these two quantities are positive. The time is always positive. What's missing is the acceleration. So we proved in earlier videos that for uniform acceleration, uh, V equals U plus AT. And we just rearrange this to get A. So we subtract U from both sides and we divide both sides by T. 16 minus 28 is minus 12. Minus 12 divided by plus 6 is minus 2. So the acceleration vector comes out to be negative. The units of acceleration in this case are meters per second squared. So if I wanted to indicate the acceleration vector, it would have to be pointing to the left because vectors pointing to the right are positive. And this vector would have a magnitude of two. Now for the entire journey, the acceleration is constant. So at t equals six, the acceleration is also two, or sorry, minus two. And the particle is somewhere anywhere at a point along its journey for the first leg, the acceleration is minus two. Of course, the velocity here is somewhere between 28 and 16. Next, we are going to get the acceleration. So this refers to the last leg of the journey. So the initial velocity for the last leg of the journey is 16, that's positive. The final velocity is plus 24. Uh, we have the distance s. Now we can think of di the distance s as a vector actually, whose tail is at the origin, so the origin would be here for the last leg of the journey, and whose head is at the car um, when the car reaches its final position. Okay, and you can see it's a positive vector. It's pointing in the positive direction. I could put in the plus sign there, but I won't bother. So what do we need? We need the acceleration. So the formula that connects these four quantities 
as we derived before is v squared equals u squared plus 2as and we rearrange this for the acceleration so we subtract u squared from both sides and then we divide both sides by 2 times s so we get 24 squared minus 16 squared divided by 2 times 40 now if you work out the top you get 320 as an aside you might notice that the thing here on top is a difference of two squares difference of two squares can be written like this 24 minus 16 times 24 plus 16 so if you know if you didn't have a calculator you could just easily work it out this way that's 8 times uh, 40 which is 320 anyway that's just an aside it's probably quicker to do it in the calculator um, okay if you divide this here you get 4 notice that the answer comes out positive well that's no surprise because the velocity vector is increasing in magnitude okay the speed is increasing if we wanted to show the acceleration vector it would be pointing to the right and its magnitude would be 4 obviously this thing is not drawn to scale but no matter where the object or the car actually is during the last leg of its journey its acceleration is always 4 meters per second squared and when it reaches the last point of its journey the acceleration is 4 uh, the velocity vector is decreasing in magnitude or sorry it's increasing in, in magnitude so when the car is somewhere here the velocity vector is going to be greater than 16 but in magnitude but less than 24 next we want p q the distance from p to q let's consider the first leg of the journey we have u we have v we have a we worked that out in the previous part and we need to find s so the formula that connects these four quantities is v squared equals u squared plus 2a s and we rearrange to find s so s is the position vector of the car you know when it's completed the first leg of its journey so it'll be some positive vector the, the magnitude of it is the distance the car has traveled during the first leg of the journey so as we've seen before we subtract u squared from both sides and divide both sides by 2a that's how we get s now this answer better come out to be positive and it does okay what's on top is negative and what's underneath is negative 4 so we get plus 132 meters and that makes sense because the car has moved to the right so the displacement vector s is pointing to the right its magnitude is 132 meters we could do this question a different way using this formula here in this formula we don't need v but we do need t and we know it takes six seconds for the car to go from here to here so if we plug the values into the, this formula you'll also get plus 132 meters finally we need the distance that the car travels during the middle leg of the journey well we see that the initial speed is 16 by the way this v here refers to the final speed of the car for the first leg of the journey but now we're forgetting about the first leg and we're considering the middle leg so we refer to the speed at this point as u okay by the way the final velocity v is also 16 um, we know that the acceleration for the middle leg is zero because the car moves with constant velocity as it goes from this point to this point here so the initial and final velocities are the same okay so we want s for the middle leg of the journey um, you might think that you can use this formula here v squared equals u squared plus 2as and rearrange this to get s as we've seen already subtract u squared from both sides divide both sides by 2a well the problem with using this formula is that uh, v squared minus u squared gives you a zero because v and u are the same and a is zero so we end up with zero divided by zero now I've explained in other videos that 0 divided by 0 can be any number we like. We could set 0 divided by 0 equal to 7.1 because if, if you cross multiply, you know, um, multiply both sides of this equation by 0, you get 0 equals 0 times 7.1 which, well actually, 
if you write 7.1 is 7.1 divided by 1, you have 0 times um, 1 is 0. 0 times 7.1 is 0. Okay, so this is true. But of course, we could have chosen a different number from 7.1. Okay, so if you get 0 divided by 0, you're in trouble. Uh, so this formula won't work. So here we use this other formula and uh, you know we plug in for the time. Since a is 0, this part of the formula effectively disappears. So we just have distance equals constant speed by time taken. You know that's just a variation on the formula uh, speed equals distance over time. So if we know that the speed is constant, which it is in this situation, it's constant 16, then it's the distance traveled divided by the time. And if we just want to get the distance, we multiply the speed by the time. So the formula is very simple when a is 0. So now we just add up the distances traveled for the three legs of the journey to get... Next we want the speed of the car 12 seconds before it passes Q. So um, where is the car going to be 12 seconds before it passes Q? Will it be in here somewhere or here or here? Um, to figure that out we need to find the time that the car passes Q at. So I don't think I've calculated that time. So let's do that. So for the last leg of the journey U is 16, V is 24. The acceleration is 4. We don't know the time. We connect these quantities with this formula, rearrange to get the time. Subtract u from both sides and divide both sides by a. So v is 24, u is 16, a is 4. So we get uh, 8 divided by 4 is 2. 2 seconds. This number better come out to be positive. t always has to come out to be positive. Okay, so it takes two seconds for the car to go from here to here. So for the last leg of the journey, um, t equals naught was the time when was the starting time when the car was here, and the finishing time is t equals two. So to get the total time for the car to go from p to q, we have to add two onto fourteen, which is sixteen. So at t equals sixteen, the car is here assuming that the timer started when the car was at P. So we need to consider where the car was 12 seconds before um, the car reaches Q. Well that's 16 minus 12 is 4. So um, 12 seconds before the re car reaches Q, the car must be somewhere in here. So the car is in the first leg of its journey. So at T equals 4, the car is here. Um, so we need the speed of the car at this time, t equals 4. Okay, we're dealing with the first leg of the journey. Um, at t equals naught, the speed is 28, so u is 28. We don't know what v is, that's what we have to find out here. Uh, the acceleration we know from the first part is minus 2. The car is actually decelerating, it's slowing down. So we use this formula here, plug in and if you do that you get 20 meters per second. Okay, so we expect a speed that's between 28 and 16 and 20 indeed is. You see every second the car's speed is decreasing by 2 meters per second. So if it starts off at 28 meters per second after 1 second the speed will be 26, after 2 seconds it will be 24, after 3 seconds 22, after 4 seconds the speed will be 20. Finally, we want the average speed of the car between P and Q. Um, so the car speed is varying throughout the journey. Okay, it's uh, decreasing for the first leg, then remaining constant for the second leg, and then uh, um, increasing for the third leg. But to get an average, we get the total distance traveled, which is 300 meters, divided by the time taken for the entire journey. So that's uh, 16. So. What this number means is that, on average, the car travels 18.75 meters per second, each second. So that's just an average, of course. Uh, for some 
uh, one second intervals the car will travel more than 18.75 for other one second intervals the car will travel less than 18.75 but we can say that for the entire journey on average the car travels 18.7 meters in each second as an aside we could uh, draw a velocity time graph for the entire journey for the first six seconds um, the car's velocity decreases from 28 to 16 okay we're dealing with uniform acceleration so uh, the velocity time graph for the first leg of the journey is, is a straight line so um, you'll only see straight lines in these graphs because the accelerations are uniform or constant for the next eight seconds the velocity is constant 16 meters per second and uh, for the last six seconds I'm sorry of the wrong number here uh, the middle leg of the journey lasts uh, from t equals 6 to t equals 14 okay we add 8 onto 6 to get 14 I made this length roughly 8 units long and then what happens is that the velocity increases from 16 to 24 for the last 2 seconds the slope of this line gives us the acceleration slope is uh, rise over run so the rise is from 16 to 24 that's 8 and the run is from 14 to 16 which is 2 so 8 divided by 2 is 4 okay as we saw before and it's got a positive slope however for the first leg of the journey the acceleration is minus 2 okay we have a deceleration we get the slope here rise over run well the rise is 28 uh, minus 16 that's 12 and the run is 6 12 divided by 6 is 2 but because the line is sloping downwards the slope of this line is actually minus 2 okay so the slope of the line gives us the acceleration this line here has horizontal slope so sorry it's a horizontal line so its slope is zero so the acceleration is zero for the middle leg of the journey